So the connection's been up for 1 minute 12 seconds. Let's go back and see what we got. So no routes yet. So let's find out why. So now we're going to check the BGP adjacency to make sure we have an adjacency that came up. And it looks like we do have an adjacency. So we're going to check the routing table. Now since we have it in a separate virtual router, you could check you could type show route, which should give you all your routing tables, but it's easier just to type table and it's the instance name .inet.0 and there's our routes. Now you notice we got 10.125.1.0 through 7.0 if we go back to Lettuce you will see there's a lot more routes than that. We've got 8, 9, and 10 that did not get sent and that's because there's a BGP policy filter that is going to match 10.125.0.0 anything in that slash 21 is going to get sent out so that's how a policy statement works on these devices and that that's going to let us be very specific in what we send out now if we go back to the firewall if I do show route you're going to see it here's the inet.0 which is our default table you notice the routes aren't in there and you notice that if I go to BLT core they're not here either this is a good thing because this gives us control over what we're sending what we're receiving what we redistribute and if they make a mistake and send, send something they shouldn't like one of our networks we don't want to have an issue where the path becomes mo more preferable through them and black holes a piece of our network so this is going to help us this whole configuration prevent that from happening now there is a couple more things we can we need to do over here uh, so we can get the bacon tomato connection up so let's let's create that instance real quick and take a look at that so let's go to bacon tomato show uh, BGP summary and you'll see that that's in the active state. Active in BGP, of course, is bad. It means that the connection is not up, and we don't want it to be inactive. And what we want to do is check everything here. So what we definitely want to do is go take a look at the other side build that virtual router and get the adjacency up so let's 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 head over there right now so now we're over here back on the BLT firewall and we're gonna create another virtual router And the other thing that we want to do, let's go down into that instance. We also want to set protocols BGP group. We'll call it bacon tomato. PRAS 65001 neighbor There we go. Sorry, I was in the instance. 77.0.0.2 is what we want to do. So we want to do set routing instance 
protocols instance bacon protocols BGP group and we call it bacon tomato peer 77.0.0.2 Peer AS is 65.001 and the neighbor is 77.0.0.2 Show routing instance bacon tomato and we also want to set an export uh, group on that but not yet uh, you know what I guess uh, let's do a commit check Let's commit that. Well, that's committing. We're going to go back up to bacon tomato. And hopefully that should change from active to established. And now it's up seven seconds, eight seconds. Configuration is up. This is very good. Let's go check on BLT and see what's going on and finish the configuration. Now we're back on the BLT firewall. Let's take a look at show route table. Bacon dash tomato. The inet dot zero. It should come up any second. Let's clear the BGP process. Let's try one more time. There we go. The routes finally came up. Took a little while, but here they are. So there's the three routes that we're matching on the other side. So now, if you look at the routing table in its completeness, we are receiving. OSPF routes from our trust interface into our main routing table. We're receiving routes from lettuce on one interface and routes from bacon tomato on another routing table. These routing tables are completely separate so the good news is is that there can be no contamination between routes which is a very good thing. So now is time for our next step to send them routes that we choose to send them and also to take the routes that they're getting and to redistribute those back in OSPF. So let's let's do that now. Alright, so the first thing we have to do is turn on a feature called auto export. And I'll tell you how that works while we're doing it. Let's go to routing options. Auto export. We have to do it also on every single instance. Let's do this on bacon tomato as well. Let's commit these changes. So auto export allows you to export routes between virtual routers and also allows you with the instance import command on the individual instances to import, uh, Im import routes into your local routing table or rib from other places. So that's the first thing, but the auto export is the first thing we need to turn on. So before we do anything, let's take a look at the routing tables again. So you can see that nothing is broken. All the routing tables are still separate. So the first thing we want to do is we want to select